Hello, welcome to this tutorial today. We're going to be able to look at how to set up and run an Arma 3 server on a control panel. Now, just looking at the, the main main parts of it, obviously it's, there's there's lots you can do, there's lots you can customise, but we're just going to have a look at, at, the, at the main bits. So, the basic configuration is generated by default. Um, typically, you don't need to edit any of the values in there, so we're going to leave that today. But you will want to have a look at this server.cfg. So things that you're going to have a look at wanting to edit is stuff like the host name, password, and admin password. The host name is going to be what's displayed in the server browser. The password is the password required to join the server, and the admin password basically allows you to moderate the server in game. Other bits that we're going to have want to have a look at uh, changing or, or varying is the message of the day. This is a, a text that comes up in the bottom left hand corner. Uh, you can place as many lines as you like. And then here is the interval in, in between each of these lines being displayed. Um, so in this case, we've got it set to 30 seconds. You can increase, you can decrease that. You can define the max players uh, generally, you would want to keep uh, to uh, kick duplicate to one, and this basically means if two people with the same user ID try to join it, will it will kick the second one or prevent you from joining. Uh, verify signatures. If you're using mods, particularly on a public server, i.e., one without passwords, you probably want that set to one, um, so that it will check the client mods against the mods authorized by the server. Uh, the vote system, typically not used nowadays, most people just run one mission, but if you did want to have two or three missions uploaded, you could set the uh, threshold of votes required to change the mission. Voice over network isn't fantastic in armor still, um, so most people use a voice over IP such as TeamSpeak, Skype, Discord, just to name a few. Uh, so you know, we've got it disabled here. Um, persistent will basically mean that when the last person leaves the server, um, it will continue to run that mission. If you have that set to zero, it will stop and, and effectively restart. So on the uh, time that they've, you know, a new player joins or the first player joins, the mission will, will start from scratch again. But like, again, if you're running a public server, Typically, you're going to want to uh, have this to one. Uh, you know, if it's a private server, you may set it to zero. You know, but like, can cause some people to be kicked. Um, you know, but it's it's really a security measure. Um, we're not going to do anything with this signature ver verification. Again, that is included by by default. Um, you know, if, if the signatures do not match with the server, it will result in that player being kicked. Uh, and then the mission uh, class. Uh, basically, this allows you to set the uh, initial template for the server uh, and the difficulty. And what you could do is, if you wanted to cycle through two or three or even more missions, you could basically just copy this section here, this class co-op section, and paste it directly below this last last bracket here, or second to last bracket here. Uh, and you could enter another mission name and a, and a difficulty. Okay, so we're going to head back and then we're going to have a look at the command line manager. So by default, again, you know, it, it includes um, the, the set of parameters that are required just to get the server running uh, using that, that sample mission. But we're going to have a look at creating a custom one. So first of all, you need to name your command line and then you've got a few options you could choose from. So these ones at the top here, um, it, it's entirely up to you as to whether you need it. Obviously if it's running on an Intel, Intel processor rather, you can en uh, enable hyper-threading. Uh, no splash, no logs and net logs. Um, basically no splash will mean that there is no splash screen displayed when joining the server. Uh, the no logs, self-explanatory really, uh, generally you'd have that unticked if you were just setting up a server or testing a server. Uh, Netlogs displays the information 
um, such as you know kills, deaths, anything kind of player based. Uh, and then no pause, no sounds. You know, obviously with it running as a server, you, you're not going to want any sound anyway, uh, and you're not going to want any any pause. Uh, we're going to keep our default configuration files and the profile and then the battle eye directory which is in the battle eye folder. Uh, next thing you can enable ranking as uh, so this will basically again this this ties into the, the net logs this will allow you to uh, record uh, sort of the progression of players on your server uh, over time so it will check their ID each time they join and it will update it accordingly and then this is the important bit mods and server mods if you don't want any mods enabled, you know, just leave these boxes unchecked and it will it will leave them empty mods. But if you do want to add mods to your server, you you obviously make sure that it's selectors, and then you just enter the name of the mod. Like so, so mod name. You know, this this isn't true, but you know, you enter the name of your mod there, and then you just separate it by semicolon. If you've got any mods that you want to use that the clients aren't required to have. You know, so I know for the XL server, there's XL server mod. Um, you can place it in that line, um, and obviously again, you just need to check the box. So once you've done that, you just hit save, and it will display a command line here. Um, obviously, the next thing you need to do is you need to make sure that this is enabled. If it's not enabled, it will not use this command line to launch the server and it will continue to use this one. You can generally tell because it's bold and it will say selected here on the right. So the next thing we're going to have a look at is the file manager. So you can have a look and see that you know what mods you've got enables, um, you, know, you can view uh, files, you can edit files so if we have a look at here this is where that configuration um, link leads to you know you can edit it here if you want to and the battle eye you've got your server config so if we just have a look at this quickly you can see this is where you can set your archon passwords so there are, there are um, administration tools out there that you can use to you know kick ban um, you know, temporary ban people, so you can edit the password for that in the be server.cfg. Go back to the root directory, um, and then in your MP missions, this is where you will place any mission files. So you basically could just upload them using this upload feature, or you can use your uh, you can use FTP to upload files and folders, which is typically a bit easier. Uh, so you select your file and then you just hit upload there. Once it's in there, you can edit that server.cfg that we've had a look at before, and it will, uh, you know, you can you can change what mission it loads in what order, you know, whether it loads two or three. Okay, so next thing we're going to have a look at is if. The game, if if Armor 3 or, or whatever server you might be running ever updates, you can click on this and it will run an update for that and it will bring the server up to the latest stable version that's available. Um, and then the final thing, if you ever want to have a look at kind of live logs or anything like that, you can use this web console. So this will display errors as the server loads. Now obviously at the minute, because of our command line having that incorrect mod, we've got this PID0. If it's ever a PID0, it means that it's failed to uh, initialize at some point. So you just need to go through, you need to check that your mods are there, that the command line manager is set up correctly, and that your configuration file is, is also correct. You know, if you've got a typo somewhere, just go through and just carefully read it. Apart from that, you can set up a scheduled task. So if you wanted to you know, restart your, your server at a given time, you could set a, a scheduled restart. You just click that. Obviously you want to name it. You, know, you can set it to a daily, weekly, monthly option. And uh, set the start date and then recur every X days. You can find that there. 
Uh, obviously we want to keep our current command line but we can default it to uh, another command line so that's the one that's our custom one that we created and that's the one that's provided by default uh, and obviously we're going to want a, a restart action you, know, you might want to start it or stop it but it's unlikely um, obviously and most of the time it's going to be a forced restart if you wait until it's empty or skip restart it may never restart because you may have people on your on your service though so yeah that brings our fairly quick tutorial to uh, to an end thank you for watching uh, and this has been brought to you by reflex servers Thank you.